Alex, do you think science supports creationism or atheism? Good question. Um, there is no real theory of atheism, but there obviously are a lot of atheists. Um, let me say two things before I answer the question. Number one is that when you're looking at a debate with an atheist and with a creationist, you, can, you will notice that the uh, creationist is always giving evidence for the existence of God. In other words, he's using inferences to the best conclusion by showing, for example, complexity and the design features of the universe. He's making a point to show evidence for God. The atheist, on the other hand, is never giving evidence for the non-existence of God. For that, he would have to do something like, hey, we did an experiment, uh, someone died, he was dead for a year, he came back, and, you know, he said he was in the tomb the whole time. Or, uh, you know, we've looked at the outer reaches of the universe, we've gone to heaven, and there was nobody there. That's not what the atheist does. The atheist tries to prove evolution. Now, can evolution disprove God? Of course not, because God could have worked within the mechanism of evolution. But what he's doing in it on his best day is showing that his worldview can stand without the need for God, okay, rather than actually needing God. So he never disproves God, never tries to. I've never seen an atheist actually try to disprove God. He's just trying to make the point that you don't need God, okay? Creationist, giving evidences for God. Atheist, on his best day, is not saying there's no God, but saying that you don't need God. Okay, done with that. Now, let me say one more thing. Uh, before I answer the question, and that is during my PhD studies, I learned that scientists never use the term prove when they're talking about a theory. What they say is the evidence supports. Which direction is the evidence going? Is the evidence pointing in this direction towards a theory or, th or towards what we call the null hypothesis, the opposite or, or the rejection of that hypothesis? So which way is the evidence going? Okay, now that that's said, <coughs> Let's look at this. Does science support atheism or creationism? Let's do this. Let's go back in time to say 10 years ago, or I'm sorry, 100 years ago, to 1911. And if you had the theory of atheism there and the theory of creation, and you look at 100 years of science, which direction would the evidence be going? And that's the best way to look at, that, at, at this question. And so let's look at which way the direction is going. Since that time, we've learned that the beginning that the universe had a beginning through the Big Bang theory, Big Bang cosmology, general uh, uh, relativity has showed us that the universe had a beginning. Before that, science was telling us that the universe was eternal. Now we know it had a beginning. That one discovery in and of itself is lethal to the theory of atheism because we know everything that began to exist had to have a cause what caused the universe. But not only do we know that the universe had a beginning, we know that the universe is very, very fine-tuned. Um, Stephen Hawking's calculated that if the expansion rate of the universe since its initial creation had been different by one part in a hundred thousand million million, the universe would have recollapsed into a fireball. So big problem right there for the theory of atheism. Then let's look at the solar system. You know, we know today that the solar system is very fine-tuned for life. Back in 1963, we knew of three conditions in our solar system that we needed to support life. Today, there is 35 conditions for the universe to have a life-sustaining universe and 122 finely-tuned conditions for our solar system in order to sustain life. They include things like the uh, electromagnetic spectrum, the um, the gravitational force, the distance from the sun, the axis of the earth, uh, photosynthesis, it goes on to 120 variables that need to be finely tuned and work perfectly well together in order to sustain life on earth. Uh, here's another one we've discovered since uh, 1911 is that life is vastly complex. Today there is no theory on the origins of life. There is no plausible theory. And the reason there's no plausible theory is because when we look inside the cell, we see that life is vastly complex. It works almost like a modern city. And they've calculated the odds of a, the simplest life form uh, coming about through natural causes to 10 to the 40,000th power. And just to give you an idea of the size of that number, anything over 10 to the 30th power is impossible. 
and here we have the probability of life emerging through natural causes as 10 with 40,000 zeros after it. Okay, so once again, it's getting much harder for the theory of atheism. Uh, since then, we've learned that the laws of physics are finely tuned. They're more precise than even our most complex uh, precise instrument, which is a gravity uh, wave uh, telescope, that the laws of physics are vastly, vastly fine-tuned, and they must be fine-tuned to support life. Um, the fossil record, you know, obviously the leading theory back then was evolution. We look at the fossil record today. It predicted this gradual evolution into uh, from simple life to complex life, but we don't see that. We see the Cambrian explosion, which happened 550 million years ago, where every body type, every phyla, appears on the fossil record in one explosion. And then we see at least three extinction events and life completely different, new species emerging right after those uh, extinction uh, events. The Permian extinction um, uh, extinguished 95% of the life on Earth, covered the Earth with, um, with, um, with volcanic lava, and shortly after that we see new species emerging on the fossil record. So um, the, all that said, uh, it's pretty clear that the evidence is moving towards the theory of creation rather than the theory of, um, of atheism. Now, why is there any atheists left? It begs the question, doesn't it? Why are there any atheists left? And here's the reason why. Because, number one, they forget history. Most atheists jump on the bandwagon today and don't realize where the theory has gone and all these discoveries and where we were before these discoveries, number one. And primarily, though, they just keep moving the goalposts. You know, they just keep moving that goalpost, keep moving that goalpost, um, and, um, and that's why there's still atheists left. But let me, let me close by saying this, because here's where they make their fatal flaw, is that let's, let's say we got a Ford Mustang, and we took that Ford Mustang and we brought it to an ancient tribe in, um, in uh, the Amazon. They'd never seen a car before. When they get in that car, they're going to think, wow, this is of the gods, and the gods brought this car. And, uh, and when they turn it on, they're going to think, oh, if the, you know, the, the spirit of Henry Ford is running the car, right? So they're going to have all these myths. Well, once they learn of, about combustion and how combustion works and some of the laws of motion and how they work, little by little, they'll realize that it is not the spirit of Henry Ford that is angry when the car doesn't start and is happy when the car moves, they are going to be able to eliminate some of those myths. And that's one of the things science has helped us do, is eliminate many of the myths that were perpetrated throughout the world. But here's where they make their fatal flaw, is to say that the car was not designed, that Henry Ford did not design the car. See, they move from eliminating some of these myths to saying there is no designer. And that's a big philosophical leap that they make, and you just they don't have the evidence to make that leap that that car did not have a designer. Yes, it works on combustion. We know that now. Yes, it works by the laws of motion, but it still has a designer.